I felt a burning sensation right away, and the warmth, well, it came a little later from her slap. I didn't expect this, otherwise I would have easily blocked the blow, or at least grabbed her hand. Rubbing my left cheek, I felt a swollen line appear. Damn, she must have hit me with one of her nails, I said. This was the price I paid for being a complete idiot, thinking not with my head, but in one place. I'm not an accessible woman, Kelly shouted at me, and everyone around her probably heard it. You're right, I admit. The easy to get one takes the money, and you just spread your legs and give it away for free, I replied, turning and leaving. I had no physical evidence that she slept with anyone, it's just that her recent actions screamed about it. I think I'm finally tired of playing her stupid games, not to mention the fact that she lied to me every chance she got. Steve, you can't just come in here, call me bad names and leave, she screamed. Everyone around stopped what they were doing and started looking at us. But yes, I could, and I did it. As they say, if the shoe fits, and I know it fits, then you are a bitch, I reproached her, turning to leave the club. Everyone continued to stare at us. You see, Kelly was my girlfriend, or ex-girlfriend, as things stand now. We were supposed to be exclusive, but it seemed like her definition of exclusivity and mine were completely different. I wasn't supposed to see or date the other girl, but those restrictions didn't apply to her. Her going to lunches, dinners, and social events without me only increased my need to stop this farce that should never have happened in the first place. When Kelly said she had to work late on Friday for a marketing meeting, I wasn't happy, but I understood that business was business. But when I went to a local dance club with my best friend David and saw Kelly on the dance floor hanging out with someone instead of being in her meeting, I hit my breaking point. Or, as David said, I finally got wise and did something smart. Unlike many of the other stories you read, I am not six foot four, 240 pounds with ripped abs, or a combat marine who can beat anyone up with my martial arts skills. No, I'm five foot ten in my socks and just under 170 pounds. My last physical fight was when I was in high school, and even then I got beat up. I wasn't a fighter then, and I certainly wasn't one now. I'm a realist. The guy she was with tonight could probably destroy me without breaking a sweat, and Kelly wasn't worth getting hurt for. So I just said what I needed to say to get her back and walked away with as much dignity as I could. Very smooth, Steve. You're just lucky that big guy didn't tear you apart, said David, catching up with me right at the entrance. Why would he do that? All that would happen is that he would probably hurt his hands beating me, and why? He already has a girlfriend, so what's the point? Well, you got your two minutes of fame by trashing Kelly and hopefully humiliating her a little. Don't count on it. Kelly dances to her own drum. I'm just tired of all her nonsense too much drama for me. Relationships shouldn't be as complicated as they were with her. I immediately thought about what I had missed and felt bad for the thousandth time. Why we were even a couple, or why she even stuck around for so long, is still a mystery. More than one person has made it clear that Kelly is way out of my league, and I have to thank my stars that she even dated me. Being practically stunning and having a great body, she loved to take advantage of people, but I was blind to it until it was too late. She caught me, pulled me out, and left me floundering at the bottom of the boat while she watched me suffocate. She would eventually pick me up, throw me back into the water, only to catch me again later. Over time, even an idiot becomes wiser. The only reason I could think she stayed was because to her I was a challenge, an anomaly, because I wasn't completely attracted to her. When we met, I already had a girlfriend. But in the end, I had what most guys wanted, everyone except me. After the scene with Kelly, I didn't go get drunk, burn all the clothes she left in my apartment, or even make some elaborate revenge plan. I didn't do anything, nothing at all. However, I did regret breaking up with my old girlfriend to start dating Kelly. Or let me rephrase that when Angie left me after she found out about Kelly. Angie and I dated on and off for about seven or eight months. We've known each other for much longer, but recently moved from acquaintances to dating and finally to couple. She had short black curly hair, was only five feet four inches tall, and was a little plump. 
But Angie had the most beautiful dark eyes that told me things only a lover could say. What initially attracted us to each other was that we both liked to do a lot of the same things. Steve, since we're doing the same things anyway, wouldn't it be better to do it together? It made complete sense. We started off slow, but after a month or so I picked up the pace. We both worked for Contact Corporation, a software company, she in technical services, and I in materials management. Angie worked there for just under five years and was completely adept in her field. She was not your average computer geek or gamer. She could communicate and connect with people at all levels, which made her popular and first caught my attention. Although we were both hired by the same company, she worked on one side of town and I worked on the other. I only saw her at meetings or corporate events. When I had problems with the software, they sent it to me to solve my problem. Two days later, we exchanged emails, and a week later, we met by chance at a movie theater. After that, we just gravitate towards each other and started going to events and places outside of work together. In the end, everyone at work assumed we were a couple, and finally, so did we. It was easy with Angie. We went from casual dating to spending most or part of most weekends together doing things we both enjoyed doing and sometimes doing nothing at all. What do you want to do tonight? I don't know. What do you want to do? Was my usual answer. Sometimes we agreed, and sometimes, let's say, we spent the evening under the covers. No pressure, no expectations, just a lot of mutual love and satisfaction. We went from the initial stage of passion to a comfortable stage where our lives continued, they just continued together. Then I ruined everything. My real passion outside of work was cooking. I considered myself something of an amateur chef. It helped that some of my best friends were professional chefs at one restaurant or another in town. Once a year, several top chefs would host an eight-course dinner with all profits going directly to the A Child's Wish Foundation. It was an exclusive event and the tickets were much more expensive than I could afford. However, Inthisi was lucky this year. The owner of the restaurant where David worked had some unexpected business and gave David his two tickets. Being my best friend and knowing how much I wanted to go there, he gave me the first chance at tickets. Steve, I'm going to make your day, he told me over the phone a week before the event. How would you like to go to the chef's gala this year and, best of all, for free? I thought he was joking, but when he said he had two tickets, I was literally floating on air. Steve, remember, this is a formality, and, he continued, you're on your own when the silent auction begins. I didn't care about that part, just going to dinner was already making my year. Angie was delighted. Now I'll have another place to wear that evening dress I bought last year. For her, it all came down to who would wear what and how it would look. We'll have to take photos there, so I'm going to get my hair done that day. Thus began her plans for the evening. I just wanted to see the menu for the evening, but it was a closely guarded secret. Saturday morning, I received a call from Angie. Sounding terrible, she told me her sad news. Steve, I'm so sorry, but I can't go tonight. I think I have the flu or something. I was sick all night. I'm so sorry. This statement was accompanied by a hoarse cough. Angie, go back to bed and don't worry about it. Just get better, okay? My mind began to work feverishly. I needed to decide what to do next. But what will you do with the other ticket? Don't worry, I'll find someone to come with me. This was easier said than done. All my friends were either busy or didn't have a tuxedo or evening dress ready to wear for such a short time. By four o'clock in the afternoon, I had exhausted all my friends and options. I decided to go by myself and make the best of it. Maybe with two tickets I can take some food with me. I laughed at the thought. I was standing outside the restaurant, waiting to enter, when I saw two women talking to the head waiter, who was checking people as they entered. Sorry, miss, this event has been sold out for at least two months, he informed them. Well, Connie, why don't you come in and have some fun? Make sure you eat enough for the two of us, she laughed. See you later this weekend. Her friend waved her hand and entered the banquet hall. If I hadn't been such a kind guy, I probably would have been a much better person, but damn, I had an extra ticket that would have otherwise gone to waste.
Excuse me, I said, walking up to the cute brunette. Are you looking for a ticket to get in? She looked at me appraisingly before answering. I was until they said it was sold out. About five foot nine inches in her heels, she looked me straight in the eyes. As it turns out, I just happened to have an extra ticket, and if you don't mind sitting next to me at dinner, it's yours. Yes, of course, and what's the catch? I assume you'll want to sleep with me for the price of a ticket, was her indignant response. Sorry to disappoint you, but no. However, if you don't take it, the seat next to me will remain empty, and I would be sorry if that happened. But since you don't want a ticket... That was all that's all I could say before she grabbed my arm, introduced herself as Kelly, and announced me as her official date for the evening. All six tables were full. The master of ceremonies greeted us and said that we were in for a real treat, adding that the menu covered all tastes and we were sure to enjoy the evening. After dinner, there will be a silent auction to raise additional money for the Child's Wish Foundation. All items have been generously donated, so the entire proceeds will go to the children. Please bid with that in mind. The evening has begun. We talked while eating. I tried to not just talk about small things, explaining each dish to her in detail. I found out that she had just broken up with her boyfriend, whom she called a vile cheater. When I smiled and asked what she really thought of him, she laughed. I was having a great time. Between the fourth and fifth courses, which were the main courses, the music started playing. Steve, are you dancing? Actually, yes, I replied, standing up and taking her hand. Okay, my last boyfriend said dancing is for weaklings. We were the first couple on the dance floor, but after the song started, three more couples joined us. The music was soft, the dancing was slow, and she felt wonderful in my arms. A few minutes later, we returned to the table, continuing our dinner. With a different wine served with each course, I made sure to drink little at a time, knowing that I would need to get home in one piece. Kelly, on the other hand, finished every drink, no matter what was in it. You should be careful with the wine, I told her. Don't worry, Connie brought me here so I can completely relax and enjoy myself. Good, because she was starting to get drunk. Dessert was some kind of chocolate souvé cake or a combination of the two. It was delicious, rich and sweet, melting in your mouth. Oh my God, this is so delicious, Kelly sighed as she devoured her piece, then looked at mine. I've never had such dinner in my life, she announced, finally putting her fork down. I'll need a week at the gym to get rid of the pounds I've gained today. What extra pounds? You look amazing, I said complimenting her for the first time. Well, you're cute, she purred, leaning down and giving me a light kiss on the lips, which caught me off guard. After dinner, we had a choice of eight different coffees, a variety of teas or glasses of ice wine. I ordered a cappuccino and Kelly chose ice wine. The wine was served at just above freezing temperatures. When I explained to her that grapes are picked from the vines after being frozen, she looked at me as if I was telling her stories. No, seriously. And instead of getting four drops of juice from each berry, they only get one, which makes it highly concentrated, which is why it's so sweet. And delicious, she added. I could drink this all night. With these words, she drank her glass in one gulp. Not at these prices. A small bottle starts at fifty to sixty dollars. This startled her a little. Well, then I better get another glass, because on my salary, this is probably the last time I drink something like that. We danced for three more songs before the auction began. I was hoping for a couple more dances because I was enjoying her company and didn't want the evening to end. Several of my friends asked who my date was and if Angie knew about her. I just said I met her tonight and no, it's not a date. It's a pity, several guys said with admiration. All items in the auction sold for prices significantly higher than their actual value. I bid on two, but the final price was almost twice what I bid. But it was fun. Finally, David came to our table after the auction, still in chef's uniform. Kelly, this is David. David, this is Kelly. They shook hands. David sat down in the empty chair next to Kelly. Well, what do you think? He asked us. 
The food was just so-so, I relayed to a shocked David. Most of the dishes were overcooked and cold by the time they were served. Fortunately, the wine drowned out their unpleasant taste. They both looked at me like I was an alien from another planet. At this point, I winked at them and grinned. It was the best dinner I've ever eaten. After this statement, David hit me and called me an asshole. Well, I need to go back to the kitchen and clean up. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Hope to see you again. Do you know all the chefs? Kelly asked me after David left. I know three of the six who cooked tonight. But it's a job I'd never want to have. The hours are long and the pay sucks until you get to the top. Well, this looks like fun and I think I could make some of the dishes we are tonight, she said, showing off. I think the wine went to her head. Well, if you ever decide, I'll bring the wine and we'll have an evening, I said, touching my coffee cup to her crystal glass. The evening has come to an end. Connie found us, we exchanged introductions, and everyone again said what a wonderful evening we had. Steve, give me your phone number, and when I finally get up the courage to try making this dinner, I'll call you. We exchanged phone numbers, and I reminded everyone to drive carefully and get home safely. It was quite a memorable night. When Angie recovered from her illness, she asked what I did with the extra ticket. I didn't lie and told her everything I had been doing all evening. I don't think she was very happy about it, especially the dancing part, but I sure as hell wasn't going to let a $500 ticket go to waste. However, I deliberately forgot to tell her about the kiss and the exchange of phone numbers. I decided that what she didn't know wouldn't hurt her, and I was sure I'd never hear from Kelly again. How wrong I was. Five weeks later, I received a call on my cell phone. The number was unfamiliar, and I answered hesitantly. This is Steve. How quickly a great evening is forgotten. Kelly, I said, recognizing her voice. How's my aspiring chef doing? That's why I'm calling, she said, all joyful. I want to take you out to dinner on Saturday night. I finally got the courage to try some fancy recipes, and I need a guinea pig to try them out. It won't be as fancy as our last dinner together, but I guarantee it will be memorable. And remember, you promised to bring wine. I quickly looked at the calendar on my mobile. Saturday suits me. Great, then it's a date. She gave me directions to her apartment, saying she was looking forward to our evening. After saying goodbye to Kelly, I began to doubt and with good reason. Although Angie and I weren't at the point in our relationship where we spent entire weekends together, we tried to spend as much time together as possible. We didn't say out loud that we were in an exclusive relationship, but it was practically implied I was in a difficult position. What will I tell Angie about Saturday if she wants to go out? Maybe I'll take her out on Friday, then I'll kill two birds with one stone. But things didn't go as I planned. Steve, I can't go out on Friday night. My friend Judy and I will be babysitting her niece, but I'd love to go out on Saturday. There's a movie I've been wanting to see for a long time, and I'll treat you. Sorry, but David asked me to help someone with some recipes on Saturday night. I know I shouldn't have lied, but how could I tell her the truth? I chose the cowardly path and felt like a real scoundrel. How about I pick you up on Sunday afternoon and we watch a movie? That works for me. Pick me up after one so we have enough time for the 2.15 session. I dodged a bullet. Three bottles of wine cost me almost $100. The ice wine alone cost over $55. I bought three different types of wine for tonight, and although they weren't on the same level as our last night together, I didn't think Kelly would mind. You see... We had two common interests, food and wine. However, I liked good food and fine wine, and you'll notice that I didn't use those adjectives when I talked about Kelly. Maybe by cooking this dinner, she will understand what it really takes to create such a special evening. Help is the text I received early Saturday evening. I think I'm in too deep. Can you come early? I immediately responded, how early? What are you doing right now? I'll take a quick shower and be right there, I replied. Do you need to bring something? I don't know, just come as soon as possible, was her panicked response. 
I quickly took a shower, and within 15 minutes, I was knocking on her door with three bottles of wine and half a bottle of cognac. Thank God you're here, Kelly said, relieved. She quickly kissed me and pulled me inside. I think I need three ovens for what I'm trying to cook. Everything requires different temperatures and will take forever if I can't get everything on at the same time. She was stressed. Relax, take a deep breath, and open one of these bottles of wine. It wasn't as bad as she thought. Remember that evening with eight courses. Each of them was prepared separately. How many did you plan? Four, including dessert. No problem, I said, unpacking the food and placing the first course in the oven. The first course will be in 45 minutes and the second course in half an hour, I explained, setting the timer on my watch. In 20 minutes, I'll serve the second dish and everything will be fine. You know, there are some ingredients I've never heard of, and I had to look them up online to find out what they were. Two of them I couldn't even find at my local grocery store. I hope it turns out delicious. Don't worry, Kelly. Cooking should be fun. That wasn't fun, she said, taking a long sip of wine. Well, if you have everything under control, I'll go upstairs and take a shower. Make yourself at home. The food was cooking, and the second course was almost ready to go in the oven, so I took a look at the main course. Salmon fillets, good choice, but they had nothing on them. I searched her cupboard and refrigerator for spices and luckily found everything I needed, including some fresh lemon. I had just finished when Kelly came back downstairs and saw what I was doing. I wasn't sure what to put on them. I was going to sprinkle some breadcrumbs and pepper on them and call it a day. I think you did more than that, I smiled at her, putting everything back in place. Well, this part is ready, I'll help set the table, and by the time we're done, the second dish will be ready to go in the oven. Everything went like clockwork after that. The crab-stuffed mushrooms were delicious, and then crusted shrimp and artichoke cakes were good, if a little dry. Two glasses of wine later, I pulled out the salmon, which was cooked to perfection along with twice-baked potatoes and roasted asparagus. Much to my chagrin, Kelly put her filet back in the oven for a couple of minutes to get it done, as she put it. Dessert was homemade key lime pie. Kelly said she went to the fresh market to buy real key limes to make it. I always thought a lime was a lime, she said, taking it out of the refrigerator. Key limes are much smaller and pale green in color. She made coffee while I cut us a piece. I put the ice wine in the freezer about two hours ago, and it was going to be the perfect ending to our dinner. I think I did pretty well for the first time. We're still alive, which means I didn't poison us. She smiled, puffing out her chest. I want to thank you for coming early. I don't think I could have finished without you. It was my pleasure to help. Just consider me your shining white boss. I knew it was corny, but at that moment I didn't know what else to say. How about a small glass of ice wine or warm cognac? Warm cognac? I don't think she's ever tried it. She refused the wine when I took out the half-full bottle of cognac that I had brought with me. Kelly drank too much cognac. It was warm, easy to wear, and had a strong impact. After the second glass, she was all over me. Sitting next to me on the couch, Kelly leaned over and whispered in my ear, Steve, I think it's time to thank you properly. And for the next five minutes, we engaged in passionate kissing. When she finished her last glass and began to unbutton her blouse, I realized that I didn't want this and stopped. Kelly, I think it's time for us to stop. I started thinking about Angie. You're half drunk, and I'm not going to take advantage of that, I said as I watched her continue to unbutton her blouse. Steve, I'm so damn horny right now. Don't worry, I'll respect you in the morning, she said, slurring her words. Damn, why me, I sighed to myself, looking up because now her blouse was completely unbuttoned, and there was nothing underneath. Wonderful was all I could think as I looked at her bare breasts, just begging to be touched. I tried my best to push her away, even when she started jumping on the couch, teasing me. Then it happened she burped. Covering her mouth, she ran to the kitchen sink. Luckily, she threw up on the side of the sink where the garbage disposal was. 
a stream of hot water, and a trash disposer made quick work of her mess. Using a wet kitchen towel, I wiped her face and watched as she staggered into the bathroom to get some mouth freshener. I don't know what happened. One minute I was fine, and the next, well, thanks for helping, she smiled, still not quite sober. Maybe next time we can do better, because right now I'm not going to be cheerful. Kelly, I shouldn't have let you have that second glass of cognac, it has a strong effect. I smiled, she didn't answer. Go get some sleep, I said, kissing her forehead. She was not satisfied with just a kiss on the forehead, she pulled me to her lips. I was glad there was no tongue when her minty lips met mine. Next time you will be all mine, she said goodbye. Damn, I wish I could see the rest of the body, I thought to myself as I walked out to my car, still half horny. Finally, in the silence of the night, returning to my room, I mentally replayed the evening. Was I serious about sleeping with her? What about Angie? Thank God I fell asleep before I could answer these questions. Sunday's film was a chick flick, but still contained enough explicit scenes to make it entertaining. When Angie asked what I did last night, I told her I was helping a friend with a new recipe. This time it was a partial lie. I didn't tell her that this friend was the same girl I met at the gala. No way, and I was grateful she didn't ask. We were a couple after all, and she trusted me. Everything returned to normal, or more accurately, to Angie and I's normal. When Kelly called and asked to try some of her new recipes, I didn't see anything wrong with it. After all, I was the one who inspired her to cook. This time, however, I only brought one bottle of wine and nothing stronger. Her skills improved. The food was delicious and perfectly cooked even without my help. I gave a few minor suggestions which she wrote down. After dinner she told me what was on her mind. I'm planning to throw a dinner for my boss and his wife for his 60th birthday in two weeks. It was his wife's idea and it will be a big surprise, especially since it will be at their home. How would you like to do me a big favor? She asked, moving closer to me on the couch. If someone like you can help me in the kitchen, I won't seem like an idiot if something goes wrong. I'll do anything to get you to agree. Damn, she knew how to be convincing. Okay, but only on one condition. Whatever you want, Steve. She instantly agreed. Let me plan the menu. And with these simple five words, without realizing it at that moment, I signed my own death sentence. Is that all? Is this your only condition? Damn, I was ready to give much more, and perhaps I will give more, she said, touching mine with her lips. Keep it down, girl, you're distracting me. She hugged me. That's the goal, Steve. Menu first, I told her. Now get out your notebook, because we're going to create a dinner they'll never forget. It took almost two hours to put everything together. I probably could have done this in an hour if Kelly hadn't been at me every ten minutes. Finally, after the fourth time I told her to stop, she reluctantly sat down next to me, frowning. Steve, do you like men or something? The look I gave her made it clear that I was not like that. Do you find me attractive, sexy, or at least moderately beautiful? Kelly, you're amazing, I just don't understand why you're interested in me. You're the first guy I've dated who hasn't tried to seduce me. Hell, I jumped on you twice, and nothing, nothing. That's why I asked. She began to unbutton her top. Now, let's try again. She closed the distance between us again. Since we'll be working very closely over the next two weeks, shouldn't we get to know each other better? With her lips on mine, for the next two hours I forgot about everything except what I was holding in my arms. She was fantastic in bed, the best I've ever been with, although I didn't have many women in my life. With her lying next to me, I should have been over the moon, but all I could think about was that I had cheated on Angie. I could try to convince myself that Angie and I weren't 100% exclusive or engaged, but in the end, I'd only be fooling myself. I pushed her away and threw my legs over the edge of her bed. The bathroom is the door on the right, she told me in a sleepy voice, but I wasn't thinking about the bathroom, although perhaps I did need to take a shower. Are you okay? she asked already sitting up in bed. See, I'm sort of dating another girl, and I shouldn't have done what we did last night. 
Now that I said it out loud, I felt even worse. Well, I'm not going to tell her, and if you don't, it'll stay between us. It's not like you're married or anything. Her words didn't make me any happier. So go to your business, use mouth freshener in the bathroom, and go back to bed. Kelly was every guy's dream, and I enjoyed her for over 12 hours. One more night like this, and I'll chain you to my bedside, she said, smiling. She prepared breakfast for us while I ground coffee. She wasn't wearing much, I was only in my boxers. But the only thing I was thinking about was how to get out of her apartment safely. You're on the pills, aren't you? Finally, I asked the question that had been bothering me since we started last night. And if not, damn, now's the time to ask, isn't it? Well, you didn't give me a chance to ask last night. She giggled. Things must have been a little crazy last night, but don't worry, I've been on the pill since I was 16. Mom said she didn't want grandchildren early. I breathed a sigh of relief. I had four voicemails and two texts from Angie. Where have you been? Was her first question when I returned home. Would you believe me if I told you that I drank too much and lost track of time last night? I answered. Steve, this isn't like you. We were supposed to go shopping today. She sounded angry. Honey, I'll make it up to you. Give me half an hour to change, and we can still make it to the mall before it closes. Steve, it's late, and I don't want to rush. How about this? We do a little shopping, and then I take you out to dinner. I was in a desperate situation. Well, only if you really want it, she replied flirtatiously. I'll be at your place before you know it. I needed a good shower to wash away Kelly's smell. I even used a little extra cologne for extra confidence. The shopping center was not crowded, and we managed to do almost everything we planned, calmly walking hand in hand through the rows of shops. When we finally finished, we ended up at her favorite Chinese buffet. Are you okay? You seem a little distracted, Angie asked, looking at me. I came up with a quick lie. I think I'm still a little hungover from last night. I was becoming a master of lies. In my own eyes, I was a real scoundrel. Damn, Steve, you outdid yourself tonight, an exhausted Angie said hours later, sipping a glass of water. I think I should get mad at you more often if that's what I get when we make up. I gave her everything I had and more because I felt guilty. We kissed and hugged for the next hour. I was almost asleep when I felt warm lips kissing me and moving down my chest. She wasn't as experienced as Kelly, but she was more than enough to get me horny again. Then it happened. We started having sex without a condom. Angie wasn't on the pill. Angie, be quiet, be quiet. This is my safe time of the month, and I've wanted to do it naturally since we first slept together, she said. Two minutes later, she was lying on my chest. I love you, Angie, I whispered in her ear. She purred and snuggled closer to me, burying her head under my arm. It was already past eleven when we finally moved. Stay the night. Angie pleaded softly into my ear. I can't, I have to work tomorrow. We could pretend to be sick. I can't do it on Mondays. I kissed her, got out of her bed and got dressed. I'll call you later. I kissed her one more time before leaving. Returning to myself, I felt even worse, if that was even possible. I've been with two different women in the last two nights and told one I love her. I promised God I would never cheat on Angie again if he gave me a chance to be forgiven for what I did on Saturday night. I don't think he listened to me. Kelly and I planned, shopped for groceries, and made sure we didn't miss anything. I wrote everything down so I wouldn't forget anything, checking and rechecking until two nights before dinner. You are doing what and with whom? Angie asked me the next night. It's just dinner, and I'm just there to make sure everything goes smoothly. Angie didn't believe me. Now I know who you were with all those times you said you were helping someone with recipes. Steve, is there something you want, or in this case, don't want to tell me? Angie, don't you trust me? This is the last time I'll probably see her, I said, begging her to understand. And I promise I'll tell you everything on Sunday morning. Why not Saturday night when you're done? Honey, we don't even start dinner until 8. 
Relax, I'll see you Sunday morning and maybe bring you some leftovers to try. I thought she believed me, but how wrong I was, I just didn't know it at the time. If it weren't for our friends who were at the chef's gala and told Angie what Kelly looked like and that I had danced more than a few dances with her, we wouldn't have had this conversation. Not to mention that she now knew for sure that I had been with her twice. My situation didn't look good. Okay, I guess I'll have to trust you to be alone with her, but I don't like that. I kissed her to dispel her doubts and thought that I got away with it. I never suspected Angie was up to anything. On Sunday afternoon, I received a text from Kelly. Steve, I need you to pick me up tomorrow. I have three boxes of stuff and they won't fit in my small car. No problem, I'll arrive a little after six in the evening, I replied. Dressed in a white shirt and black pants, I pulled up to the Kelly building. We loaded up my car and headed to her boss's house, both on edge, not wanting to screw up. Everything went better than I could have imagined. We started with a nice bottle of wine and two different appetizers, followed by two main courses with sides, and finished with two different desserts and after-dinner drinks. It couldn't have worked out better if David and his team of chefs were cooking the food. Her boss and his wife had nothing but praise for what we cooked, and both said they had never eaten better. The wife was all smiles as she handed Kelly the envelope. There's a little extra for both of you, she said, still smiling as she watched us pack everything. You too should do this professionally, you clearly have a talent for it. We thanked her and ten minutes later we were packing my car. Are we cool or what? Kelly shouted as we drove to her place. I can't believe it went so smoothly and everything was just as we planned. She was overjoyed. How much did we make tonight? I asked, wondering if all our expenses had paid off. Steve, how much did we spend on food and wine? Well, you have all these numbers with you. Let's unpack first and then take a look. We have more leftovers than I thought. The boss's wife told us to take everything that was left except the wine. With a wink, she told Kelly that she was planning something special for her husband later in the evening to burn off the calories from dinner. As she walked us out, she told Kelly, Don't plan on seeing him before 10 in the morning on Monday. After putting all the leftovers in her refrigerator, we sat down with a glass of wine and started counting our expenses. As best as I can accurately count, we spent 225 on food, just under 78 on wine, and another 30 to 40 on miscellaneous table items. That makes a total of 340 odd dollars. How much did she pay us? Kelly opened the envelope and took out $800 bills. Damn it, Steve, we're rich, she exclaimed, jumping up and down. Kelly, I don't think $450 in profit makes us rich. But for one night's work? We probably spent 10 hours shopping, cooking, and organizing everything else. That works out to about $45 an hour, and if you split it between the two of us, we each made about $23 an hour. Steve, I don't make $23 an hour at my day job. It's free money to me because we don't even pay taxes on it, and you heard what she said, we should do this professionally. She was excited and on edge. It would be fun to do from time to time, but I wouldn't want to do it full time, maybe part-time, but not full-time. I don't think Kelly heard a word I said. She walked back and forth with a glass of wine in her hand, constantly refilling it for me. Damn, I'm on edge and I know how to get all this excess energy out, she announced, taking off her blouse and bra and throwing them on the couch next to me. Kelly, I told you there would be no more sex I have a girlfriend. Just one more time, I'll even let you tie me up if you want. I just can't, and even if I wanted to, I don't have condoms with me. Steve, I'm on the pills. I forgot about it. It was Angie who didn't take the pills. I just cannot. No, it's okay. Besides, I have to leave because I have a date tomorrow morning. Well, if you change your mind, you have my number and you know where to find me. I was going to grab some food, but decided it was best to just leave. Kelly walked me to the door, giving it one more try before opening it. Finally realizing that the night was over and I was leaving, 
She opened the door, kissed me on the lips, and watched me walk to my car. And then everything went to hell. Well, Steve, looks like she thanked you in a way that only I should, Angie said, annoyed. Honey, what are you doing here? Just checking in on what my boyfriend is up to. Coming close to me, she said, do you want to explain that kiss I just saw? I was about to say something to calm her down when she suddenly sniffed me. I saw her jaw drop and her eyes widen in realization. You pathetic piece of shit, she screamed at me. She turned and motioned for her friend Judy, who was standing by her car. That bastard cheated on me, she screamed at Judy. Angie, I started, trying to stop her. She continued to walk away, but gave me the middle finger before getting into Judy's car. My life just fell apart. Angie, I shouted again before her car drove away. Damn, what should we do now? The consequences were just beginning. The next two weeks were difficult. I begged and begged Angie to talk to me, but she kept dropping my calls and didn't answer any of my emails. I was going to tell her that I didn't sleep with Kelly on Saturday, but what could I say? I just satisfied her because she needed some relief. It would have gone like lead in a balloon. Then I tried a different approach. Judy, you just have to get her to talk to me, I begged her friend. I made a huge mistake, but I really love her. Steve, what you did is not something a man who loves someone else would do. She wanted to believe you, but after what she saw and smelled, you painted yourself into a corner. This was too much of a betrayal for her. She will never, I repeat, will never forgive you, I'm sure of that. And Judy was right. Kelly said she was sorry, but I knew she wasn't. She simply decided that she had won and left everything as it was. Now I was the envy of most guys. Everyone said how lucky I was to have a girl like Kelly. She was sweet and the sex was amazing, but it wasn't the same as with Angie. Kelly was shallow and only did things to me because it was a girl's thing to do, not because she liked it. After a while she stopped doing what I liked. These things were replaced by what she liked, and I didn't say anything. I thought I deserved what I got, and just went with the flow, paying for my sins. The first cracks in the relationship appeared less than five months later. I no longer had weekends with Kelly, now I had to share hers with her friends. When I told her that I didn't like her slow dancing with other guys, she brushed it off, saying that she always ends the evening in my arms. And when I started to rebel and didn't want to go to clubs every weekend, she went without me. The third time I caught her lying, we had a scandal. She said she was going with her friends. I found out later that she went to dinner with some guy. Damn it, Kelly, did you think I'd never find out? It's not like you go to some remote restaurant. My friend Kenny is one of the chefs at Antonio's. He called me when your friend sent his dish back because it wasn't cooked to his liking. Steve, he's the new manager at work, and I was just showing him around the city. It was a business dinner, that's all. I knew you wouldn't understand, so I didn't tell you. Does this mean you can lie to me? Did he end the night at your place? Steve, I don't think I gave you a reason to ask that question. But to answer your question, no, he's not done. He dropped me off at my house and left. Satisfied? I wasn't because I didn't believe her for a second. Everything was fine for the next eight or nine weeks. She tried her best to make amends to me. I started to trust her again when she announced that the marketing group she was part of was having a meeting that evening, and they would even bring dinner. Like a fool, I believed her. David, I'm single tonight, I told my friend. How about we go out and have some fun? Are you sure this is normal for Kelly? I know she has you on a short leash. Not funny, David. She has a meeting today, you're free tonight, and tomorrow we have to go to a party with one of her friends, so it's either today or never. We went out. We went to three clubs. The first two were our usual places, but the third was a club that opened a couple of months ago. Like any new club, it was crowded, and we literally had to wait for almost half an hour before they let us in. It was dark and loud inside, there were a lot of people. We got to the bar and ten minutes later, we had a pair of Coronas in our hands. Let's check this place out, David said as we walked along the wall behind the people on the dance floor. 
David was the first to notice Kelly on the dance floor. Steve, what time does Kelly have to finish her meeting tonight? No idea, but it's probably late because they're bringing dinner. Well, looks like the meeting ended early. He pointed his beer towards the dance floor. I couldn't see her from where I was standing, so I walked closer to him. Even in that dim light, I could see it was Kelly. She moved and rubbed against the tall guy who didn't seem to know how to dance, but damn, she did most of the moves. Kelly smiled as she moved her ass against his leg. I waited for the song to end and for them to return to their table. Steve, don't do anything stupid, was David's only advice, but I didn't acknowledge it or listen to it. All I saw was red as I made my way through the crowd to their table. Kelly was so absorbed in her new friend that she didn't even notice my approach. I think your meeting ended early, huh? Were my first words. Her new friend glanced at me. Steve, we finished the meeting early and decided to have something to eat. And since I had never been to this club, we came here. This is Doug, the new manager from work I told you about. Her eyes were like saucers and her voice rosy an octave because she was talking so fast trying to explain what I was seeing. Doug, for the record, when you have sex with her, do it from behind. She really likes it this way, no matter what she says, I said loud enough for everyone at the table to hear. And if I were you, I'd use a condom because otherwise you'll catch something. She's a real approachable girl, if you know what I mean. I smiled, took a sip of beer, and turned to leave, or better yet, burn with shame. I'm not like that, Kelly shouted after me. And then I made the mistake of turning to her. She hit me in the face, scratching my cheek with one of her long nails. I wanted to hit her, but I restrained myself. The club became quiet. The patrons were not only watching us, but also waiting to see what Kelly or I would say or do. I admit it's a mistake. Those who are available take money, and you just spread your legs for free. Kelly and I exchanged a few more insults, including me calling her a bitch, before I finally turned around and walked out the front door past the security guard who was watching us intently, David caught up with me at the exit. He said something about how lucky I was to get out alive considering the size of the guy she was with, but I didn't listen. We got into my car and just drove off. Can I ask where we are going? David finally asked as we were heading in the opposite direction from our house. Hearing his voice brought me out of my stupor as he added, the earth is calling Steve. Sorry, David, I think I'm a little out of my mind, I said, turning the car around. I knew that everything would end like this, it's just that within seven months I seriously ruined my life, and I can only blame myself for this. What the hell was I thinking, getting involved with a girl like Kelly? Thinking in one place, David muttered. Jerk! Well, you asked, so what are you going to do now? I guess I could spend a couple of weeks feeling sorry for myself or drinking myself into oblivion. But as you know, it won't take much. I think I'll just pack up her things that are at my house and deal with it. Would you like a size 4 drunken set of underwear? I bought it for her a couple of weeks ago, but never gave it to her. It won't suit me, although my girlfriend might like it. You really said scarlet and vulgar, didn't you? He smiled. She didn't have many things at my house, and within ten minutes everything was packed and standing by the door. I didn't expect her to rush home and beg me to take her back. Unlikely. Doug was probably up to his neck in it by now, and to be honest, I didn't care anymore. I think deep down you know when it's over, and in my case I knew it for a long time. This gave me the final push I needed to finally finish everything. But no matter how bad it is, the endings are always a little sad. Over the next few days, I called myself a fool more than once, but all I heard was the echo of my voice in my head. Over the next few days, I received calls and emails from Kelly. She tried to explain what I saw, but the only thing I was interested in was when she would come to pick up her things. Steve, I'm sorry, but it's not what you think, she said, continuing to try to convince me one last time. Kelly, I don't care. You can do whatever you want, but not with me anymore. You sure? We could try again. You must be joking. Why would I put myself through this again? You're just not worth it. She tried to kiss me goodbye, 
but I turned my head away so she only kissed the cheek she had scratched. I was relieved to know that she was gone, but I still felt a huge emptiness inside, and it wasn't because Kelly left. How is she? I asked Judy, Angie's best friend, a couple of months later. I didn't even know she had left the maintenance department for a field position. She took it over a couple of months ago, in case you were wondering. She's tired of hearing about you and your new girlfriend, but I heard congratulations are in order. You finally figured out who she really is, and it took you long enough. I knew this a week after Angie left. After a couple of weeks of calls and emails with no response, I realized that I had screwed up terribly. You are damn right. For a smart person, you really were stupid. I know. No need to get me started on this. Everyone has already put in their two cents. Well, when you see Angie, tell her I'm sorry I ruined everything. It's not her fault. And by the way, I didn't sleep with Kelly that night. We played around a bit, but I didn't sleep with her. Did we play around a bit? Damn it, you shouldn't have done anything with that bitch in the first place. Angie was devastated. She trusted you until, well, you know when. Well, tell her I'm still sorry, and if possible, I'd like to remain her friend. Do you even know anything about women, Steve? She opened up everything to you, you broke her heart, and now you want to remain her friend? Lord, will you ever learn? Maybe if you crawled on all fours and licked the soles of her shoes, she would talk to you, but in your case, words mean nothing. Judy went on a tirade. Damn it, if you caught her doing what you did, what would your reaction be? Would you forgive her or throw her in the trash? She was right. So my life continued. Angie continued to receive golden reviews from clients in the field. I hoped to see her at some department meetings or recent corporate events, but she never showed up. Even after all this time, I hoped to at least accidentally run into her in the city, but this never happened. One Friday evening, wallowing in self-pity, I gathered my courage and wrote her a letter. I told her everything. I didn't lie when I said I loved you that last night we were together. I wish I had listened to you and had more willpower instead of being a weak son of a bitch. Maybe one day you will find it in your heart to forgive me. I went on and on, giving my reasons and bemoaning my stupidity. I knew it was pathetic and sentimental, but I hoped for forgiveness. And as I expected, my hopes were dashed again when no response came. A few weeks later, I was sitting with David in one of our local bars when Judy snuck up behind me. Still hanging around, or have you found another doll to warm your bed at night? She hit me, looking around as if expecting someone to appear. No, and I'm not even looking. Can I buy you a drink? She thought for a second, then sat down. Just a glass of white wine, she replied. I handed David a ten and asked him to bring her a glass. He shrugged and headed towards the bar. So, how are you? Have not seen you for a long time. I tried to start a casual conversation. You look good tonight. Are you still dating that guy? His name is Todd, and no, we're not together anymore. Like you, he couldn't keep it in his pants. After she said this and realized how much it affected me, she took my hand. Sorry, that was unreasonable. I'm still a little vulnerable. It's okay, you didn't say anything that wasn't true. Besides, I've already gotten over it and hopefully I've matured. David returned with her glass of wine and two bottles of beer. You owe me five more dollars. For one glass of wine, I was indignant. No, for wine and another round for the two of us. Did you really think I would come all this way and not get something for us? He looked at me with that stupid grin of his. We talked about nonsense for a few minutes before Judy got down to business. You didn't ask about Angie? Aren't you wondering how she is? Yes and no. A few weeks ago, I finally wrote her a letter and told her everything. She never responded, so I just assumed she still thought I was a cheater and not worthy of an answer. She probably already has a new boyfriend. If you see her, Tell her I wish her the best, and I mean it. Angie told me about it and said she was touched. Still angry, but touched by your honesty. And no, she doesn't have a regular boyfriend at the moment. She returned home to her parents and has been quite busy lately. 
The next time I see her, I will convey your wishes to her. But now, if you'll excuse me, I see that my company is calling me. It was nice to talk to you. I hope everything goes well for you. With these words, she left. David watched her leave. Nice ass, he said admiringly. I looked again. Yes, she really had a beautiful figure. And then I realized that it was precisely these thoughts that led me to trouble last time. It was almost four weeks later that Friday evening, I saw Judy again. She was with three other girls and having a great time. I was quietly drinking my Corona, watching them, when I decided to ask her to dance. She was surprised, and although she looked at me strangely, she said, Why not? It was nice. I haven't danced in a long time, and as they say, I danced like a wooden white guy, but I still had fun. Until the guy she danced with earlier decided that I had moved on to his girl. You've already danced, now go away, the girl is with me today. He was tall and thin, with light brown skin. He came not alone, but with two friends similar to him. I was sure that all three of them wanted to spend the night with someone. Judy came to my defense. Hey, asshole, this is my friend, and you have no right to tell me what I can do or who I can dance with. After that, everything went wrong. Harsh words were spoken on both sides. I tried to stay between Judy and this guy. When he called her a bitch and pushed her, I came to her defense and pushed him away from her. Damn, it hurt so much. Every pore in my body was screaming and asking how did I end up in this situation. Three against one is not the best odds. Before the guards could approach us, these three almost beat me to a pulp. Like I said, I'm not a fighter, and I proved it beyond a doubt that night. Fortunately, nothing was broken. There were cracks, but not fractures. I don't know who took me to the hospital or how I got there. All I knew was that I sat there alone, not seeing a single familiar face for the next six long hours. You realize that during this time a person could have died while you were treating me, I said sarcastically. Who would you like us to receive before you? The patient with a heart attack or the guy with a gunshot wound? The doctor in the emergency room answered me sharply. This puts everything in its place. You will be quite sick for about a week, and it will seem like everything is much worse than it actually is. In three weeks you won't even be able to say you were in a bar fight. He smiled, I couldn't. I found the keys in my jacket pocket and the car in the emergency lot. Like last time, I didn't know who took such care to bring my car to the hospital, but I mentally thanked this person. I wish I had stayed home last night instead of going clubbing. I wanted to have a nice evening and dance with a nice girl. Now I'm paying the price for trying to protect this good girl from a jerk. Damn, I don't know if it worked, and where did Judy disappear to? Plus, it was unpleasant to drive with two swollen hands. Judy called me on my cell phone two hours later. Steve, are you okay? How do you feel? After we were released from the police, we went to the hospital, but we couldn't find you. I'm so sorry I got you into this. If it makes you feel any better, those three guys were charged with assault and battery. It didn't really cheer me up, but I was glad to hear it. When she paused, I finally got a word in and asked, Are you okay? Did they hurt you? Steve, they were too busy with you and then running away from the guards to worry about me. This is good. Judy, I'd like to talk more, but I'm going to take some painkillers and sleep. It's been a rough night. One pill and a glass of water, and I passed out for almost eight hours. On Sunday, I looked at my disfigured face and told myself not to get into a fight next time. Just grab her and get her out of there, that's what I had to do. I put ice on my hands and face all day. By evening, most of the swelling had subsided. At least I'll have a war story for Monday. Hell, everyone knew about it before I walked into the office. People came into my office all morning to see what I looked like. Some of the guys laughed and asked what the other guy looked like. The positive side was that I received sympathy from most women. By 11 o'clock, I was already old news. When I got home, the first thing I did was take another pain pill. I sat down at my desk to check my email. I had five new messages. After deleting the first two, I saw one that made my heart skip a beat. I opened it. 
I want to thank you for protecting my friend. When she told me what had happened, I almost died. I hope you're doing well. Judy said she planned to come to see you tomorrow after work. She feels guilty and brings you a basket wishing you well, but doesn't tell her what I said. It took me an hour to respond. I constantly wrote, deleted, and rewrote my answers. It was my fifth or sixth attempt when I finally hit the submit button. I probably stared at the screen for an hour, hoping for an immediate answer there was none. Her answer came two days, three hours and seventeen minutes later, not that I was keeping track of the time. Without date, just coffee, and I'll meet you at Starbucks on Saturday at half past one. I think you still remember what I look like, so I won't tell you what I'll be wearing. It was a joke between us. Angie often changed clothes several times before we went somewhere. She looked great. Damn, she looked amazing. I arrived on time, but she was already there and took a table by the door. She was playing with her iPhone when I walked in. Hi Angie, you look beautiful as always. I wish I could say the same about you. Does your face hurt as much as it looks? Not good. You take one of those little magic pills and you can walk through a brick wall and not feel any pain, but thanks for caring. Would you like to grab a cup of coffee? She nodded. I went to the counter to order. Even from there, I couldn't take my eyes off her. Steve, your eyes are going to pop out of your head if you don't stop staring. I haven't changed that much, Angie said as I returned to our table with coffee. I'm not saying that I've changed, it's just that we haven't seen each other for a long time. Eleven months, three days and twelve hours, but that's only an approximation, she said, looking at her watch. I smiled slightly because that was all my face could bear at that moment. I thought we'd start with some casual conversation, but it soon became clear that Angie had other plans. Angie looked at me and said in a stern tone, Just because I'm here doesn't mean I've forgiven you. The only reason I'm here is because of Judy. I started to say something, but she interrupted me. You've spoken, now it's my turn, so shut up and listen. Okay, but please calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. If it weren't for the fact that you couldn't keep your gun in your pants, we wouldn't have to have this conversation. I started apologizing again, which was another big mistake. Steve, one more word, and I'm leaving. Now shut up and listen to me. You're lucky that I prevented my brothers Andy and Carl from changing your face and courage forever after what you've done. You hurt me. Damn it, you've hurt me, especially after I gave you everything I had. I opened my heart, my body, and my soul, and you shattered them without thinking about what we have and who I am to you. Steve, you said you loved me and then went and cheated on me with some bitch. Do you have any idea what it did to me? I sat petrified, listening. I've never seen Angie so angry. I wanted to hurt you as much as you hurt me, but I had more important things in life to deal with. So don't think your puppy face and apology mean anything to me. I don't think she took a single breath the entire time she was tearing me apart. She finally stopped, took a few sips of coffee, and sat staring at me. Well, aren't you going to say anything? You told me not to say anything. She smiled and giggled. That's the first sensible thing you've said in a very long time. At least you're finally listening. We talked for almost another hour. She listened while I repeated everything I had told her in my last letter. She sat quietly, without interrupting me, until I began to get sentimental. Looking at her watch, she said that she needed to leave. Can I see you again? How about dinner one night? Steve, we're just talking now, and I'll decide when and if we move to the next stage. I still don't trust you, and just words don't mean anything to me anymore. Then how can I show you that I've changed if we don't see each other? I didn't want to seem too needy, but I wanted to at least be a part of her life. If you're interested, I think we can talk again. If you want, you can write me letters, I will answer. But I need to check my schedule to see when we can meet. My life is now much more complicated than ever, and you are definitely not part of it yet. She kissed me on the cheek, so it wasn't a complete failure. Over the next few weeks, we wrote to each other, talked on the phone, and started getting requainted. Believe it or not, she initiated almost half of the letters, and then everything went to hell again. 
On Thursday, I had dinner with a client from out of town at one of the best restaurants in town. That's when I saw Angie walk in with some guy. He was tall and handsome, but most importantly, she looked fantastic, all dressed up. I couldn't take my eyes off her the entire meal. When we finished dessert and drank coffee, she finally noticed me. Our eyes met for a split second, and that was all. I paid the bill and took the client back to his hotel. I think I finally understand what her complications are. I didn't call or text her after that. I wanted to be with her, but I wasn't going to beg her to come back to me anymore. I'll let her deal with her complications first. It only took three days. What? You won't write or call me anymore? I thought for a long time before answering. This won't be some quick witty comeback or lame excuses. Let me know when you sort out your complications. Short, clear, and to the point. I didn't have to wait long the next evening. She was on my doorstep. Who the hell do you think you are? She began straight away. Last time I checked, we weren't a couple anymore, or did I miss something? You're right, we're not a couple anymore, and you can date anyone you want, just not me. She responded sharply, sorry. Angie, I want you back. I think I've made that clear, but just you, without a bunch of other guys to boot. We need to be exclusive if we want to have any chance of getting back together. I stood my ground. What about business dinners and lunches? Neither you nor I can do anything about it. We just have to trust each other. Steve, I'm still a long way from trusting you. I understand that, and I know it will take time, but if we want to move forward, we need to be exclusive. I stood my ground. I will think about it. I felt her slipping away. Angie, I don't want to lose you again. Take as much time as you need. Just let me know when you figure out your complications. She looked at me angrily, but still kissed me on the cheek before leaving. Well, everything went great, didn't it? I thought. Today was Wednesday, and I assumed that I would hear something from her by Friday, but I didn't. On Saturday, I was going crazy sitting and waiting for her call. David said he was working, but agreed to meet me at our favorite club after work. I made sure I had my cell phone and even turned it on to vibrate so I wouldn't miss her call. I had two drinks when David finally appeared, beer in hand. I thought you'd be on the dance floor having a good time. Why the hell are you sitting at the table alone? David attacked me. I'm waiting for you and a call from Angie, if you really want to know, was my quick answer. Buddy, you know she's here, right? I just looked at him. She's here with that Judy girl, you know, the one with the good ass, and two other girls. Where? Show me. We walked to the edge of the dance floor, and sure enough, there they were, dancing with each other. Damn it, was the first thing that came to my mind. See, I told you so. Why don't you come over and ask her to dance? Are you afraid that she will throw you off? I guess I was afraid. I waited for the next song to start to work up the courage to make my move. I approached her when I saw that she was already dancing with some other guy. Damn, what now? I stood in the middle of the dance floor, feeling like a complete idiot. I turned around and returned to my seat. Steve, as soon as the song ends, don't wait, go and invite her. David chided me for being so slow on the uptake. I didn't wait for the song to end. I walked along the edge of the dance floor and waited for my chance, which never came. Looks like Angie had a full dance card. Now another guy was taking up her time. I was sure she must have noticed me standing there like an idiot, waiting my turn. I know Judy definitely noticed. After the sixth or seventh song, I just gave up and left. I told David I was leaving and headed for the exit. Steve, where the hell are you going? I turned and looked at Judy and then headed out again. When she said, Angie knows you're here, I stopped and turned around again. So why is she playing these damn games? Judy stood there with her mouth open. Tell her not to worry, I won't bother her anymore. I'm tired of paying for what I did. I think she called my name again, but I was already out the door. It's time to move on. On Sunday, I ignored two emails and one call from Angie. Does she want to talk now? I deleted them all without listening to what she had to say. I screwed up. I admitted it to Angie and was willing to make amends, but I wasn't going to be a fool. 
It looks like Angie is the type who doesn't forgive and doesn't forget, so be it. Monday was terrible and Tuesday was no better. My boss came at me for something I didn't do, and it was my fault, but that didn't make it any easier. By the time I got home, I was in a terrible mood, and I only had one bottle of beer left in the fridge. I had just opened it when I heard someone at the door. Looking through the peephole, I shrugged and opened the door. Judy, what do you need? You don't answer her letters and calls. And what? Angie is afraid she's gone too far this time. Judy, why are you here? Or maybe a better question would be, why isn't Angie here? She's afraid you won't talk to her. She clearly felt uncomfortable. Damn it, wait a second. I returned to the apartment, put the beer on the table and grabbed my keys and jacket. It's time to get this moving, we'll go to Angie. I waited for Judy to say something. When she remained silent, I continued. I don't care if you warn her, but she should be there when we get there. I got in the car and followed Judy to Angie's parents' house. A trip that usually took 10 minutes took 15. I think Judy drove slower on purpose to give Angie more time, for what purpose I didn't know. She parked in the driveway and I parked outside, in case her brothers were there and I had to run. Judy stood by the car while I walked to the door and rang the bell twice. Her mother opened the door. Steve, what a pleasant surprise, come in, she greeted me, stepping aside. Long time no see, come in and feel at home. Thank you, Mrs. Thomas. How many times have I told you, call me Carla, she answered cheerfully, smiling widely. Mike will be sorry he missed you. He's at the Elks Lodge doing something, I don't know what, she said, shaking her head. I'll go get Angie. It seemed like everyone was stalling for time. Finally, Angie came down the stairs. Hey, Steve. Judy said you and her were coming here. Did I go too far at that party? I walked up to her, hugged her, and kissed her on the lips. This surprised her greatly. Angie, no more games between us. I screwed up big time, I know it, and it won't happen again, I promise. I was a fool to let you go. I want to bring you back, but only if you want it. I didn't lie when I said I love you. I said it then, and if you give me a second chance, I will prove it to you again. I didn't let her say a word until I spoke. Still hugging her, I breathed a sigh of relief. Are you finished? Yes, I think I've said it all. I was still holding her. Honey, will Steve stay for dinner? Angie's mom asked, peeking in from the kitchen. Angie turned towards the kitchen. Give me half an hour and I'll tell you. She turned to me again. You can let me go at any time, don't worry, I won't run away. I won't let you go until you tell me why. Why are these games on Saturday night? Steve, I didn't even notice you at first. I just danced with whoever invited me. When I finally saw you, I don't know, maybe I wanted you to see that other guys found me attractive and wanted to be with me. Maybe she wanted to make you jealous, I don't know. But then I noticed that you were gone, and so was Judy. She told me later how angry you were. Believe it or not, I tried to catch up with you, but by the time I got out, you had already sped out of the parking lot like crazy, and you know the rest. Will you forgive me for being a bitch? We will both have to forgive each other for a lot of things. How about we go back a year and start again? I wish I could, but things are different now. I know this, I have matured, and I think you have too. It will feel like a new beginning. I smiled. Everything is much more complicated. I wasn't entirely honest with you, and I don't know how to say it. Angie, what happened in the past is in the past. I'm not going to ask what you did last year, and I've already told you in detail what I did. All this doesn't matter anymore. Well, in my case, it's not that simple. Angie, if you have something to say, say it. I'm not going to yell at you. Steve, don't be so sure. I looked at her with a stern look. Listen, I'm not going anywhere until you tell me I have all the time. Okay, she cleared her throat. It might be easier to show you. She took my hand and led me up the stairs, down the hallway, and into her bedroom. His name is Duane, after my grandfather. There, in a crib, a light brown baby was sleeping. 
I don't understand. But the first words that came to my mind were, how and when. Do you understand that he is yours? She said, now looking at me, waiting for a reaction. I thought it would be lighter, since my skin is more milky chocolate and not very dark, and you're damn white. It turns out, besides my cheating, what bothered her the most was that I cheated on her with a beautiful white girl. She felt like I was indirectly telling her that she wasn't good enough for me, or so she thought. How wrong she was. Steve, you'll never know. I was going to raise him alone and give him the best life I could. I had to move back to my mom and dad because I still needed to work. To get away from you. Hell, you should have known something was wrong the first time you saw me. I've been following you for a while, and it was Judy who told me you broke up with that bitch. I don't understand when. I started talking. Then I remembered the last time we were close. I saw Angie sigh and shrug. I think my body clock is really off. She listened to me argue with her for the next ten minutes. At that moment, I was beside myself with anger. Angie, what kind of an asshole do you think I am? Did you really think that I would leave you? Don't you think I would do the right thing? Steve, think about it. I just caught you cheating. I was hurt and angry as hell. I didn't even know about the baby for weeks after that night. By that time, we were no longer a couple, and I had to make some difficult decisions for the child I was carrying. And I'm not saying I made all the right decisions. I just had to deal with what I had to deal with. For the next five minutes, neither of us said anything. I watched my son sleep letting my brain process what was happening. Whose name is on his birth certificate? Only mine. Under my father, I was listed as unknown. I gave her an angry look. I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to tie you up with a child you didn't want. You never gave me a chance. I was wondering what could happen next when her mother poked her head into the bedroom. Children, dinner is ready. I think you two could use a little break. She was right. We ate in silence, watching each other. Her mother asked what I was doing, how my parents were, and if there was anything new. She stopped for a second and smiled. Sorry about that. Tomorrow you and I will go to the courthouse and deal with the missing birth certificate. I cannot allow my son to live his life with the unknown listed as his father on his birth certificate. Her mom smiled, but Angie didn't. Steve, we still have problems to solve. Damn right, I screamed. Carla frowned. I mean, damn, that's what we do, I repeated in a much quieter voice. This time Carla smiled and nodded. But we can't address them individually, and certainly not through email and phone calls. Why don't we take it slow and see what happens? Angie, it already happened. Do you know what I mean? Just because you're Dwayne's father doesn't mean we're back together. I need time, everything is happening too quickly, and I don't want to make another mistake again. I can't, it's not just me anymore. Look, I don't know how many times I have to say I love you. I loved you before Dwayne, and I love you even more now, if that's even possible. I'm willing to give it another try if you are. I reached for her hand. Please, I looked at her and then back at her mother, who was smiling again, showing her approval. We spent the next six months getting to know each other again. We talked, did many of the same things we had done before, and made new memories. Was it easy? Of course not. More than once I thought that we couldn't cope. Now I had to adjust to being number two in her life. But we acted like family and took Dwayne with us wherever we went. My whole family was excited about Angie and Dwayne, but with her two older brothers, it was a no-brainer. They watched their pregnant little sister get fat and live alone for nine difficult months, and they wanted to make me pay. I'm glad they were there for her. Even now, I cannot say that I have been completely forgiven, but we are working on it. What do you want to do today? Angie asked me early Saturday morning as she woke up next to me in bed. I don't care, I said, stroking her hand but I have a few ideas I'd like to explore. Her kisses were hot and everything was going well when I heard a familiar scream. Your turn, she said, rolling over and grabbing a pillow. I spanked her ass. My son, our son, was changed, fed and brought to our bed with a smile. 
I placed him between us, touched my lips to his bare stomach, and blew hard as his stomach shook and made a loud noise. He smiled and chuckled. I carefully placed it on my mother's stomach. After all this time, you still can't put his diaper on properly, she said, turning around and adjusting him. That's when she noticed a very large safety pin on the front. Steve, you wouldn't have to pin them if you did it right. Then she saw them sparkle. Angie looked at me and unfastened the huge pin. The ring slipped and fell into her palm, and she still didn't say anything. She placed it on her finger and held out her hand, just looking at it. Shouldn't you say something? Do you know how to make me an honest woman or something? No, I think I'll just ask you to marry me and live happily ever after. She didn't scream, scream, or yell. We've done all that before. We kissed, and this time I asked her a question seriously, and she agreed. Nobody was surprised. Both our mothers said it was long overdue. She wanted the wedding to be colorful, and that's exactly what she got. White dress and all. Due to our conflicting work schedules, the best we could do was plan a four-day honeymoon, but we've essentially been on a honeymoon for the last six months. I think her father said it best. Looking at his wife, he announced to all our wedding guests that the honeymoon will only end when you let him. Taking his glass of wine from the table, he said, I would like to make a toast. He looked at his daughter and her new husband. Angie and Steve, remember to live each day as if it were your last and love each other as if it were your first time together. He paused, sighed, raised his glass higher and added, and one more thing, never go to bed angry. Everyone shouted, hear, hear, as we gave each other a soft, tender kiss that sealed the bond between us, we became one again, forever and ever. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one.